Hello everyone and welcome back to The Breakdown. Today I'm going to be showing you how to start a bucket server as well as how to start a spigot server in Minecraft 1.14. This will allow your server to have plugins on it as well as do tons of other awesome cool stuff. You can limit entity spawning. You can do all sorts of stuff with spigot and bucket. Now we are going to be using spigot in this video and that is because spigot is just a distribution of bucket. Basically they're one and the same. Bucket plugins can run on spigot. Spigot plugins can run on bucket but it is important to know that spigot is better optimized and it's just an overall better software than Bucket. That's what we're going to be using Spigot today because you can run all the plugins you can run on Bucket on Spigot without any problems. Additionally, this is not a 24-hour server. It's a server that's only up when your computer is running and you're going to need a good enough computer to be able to run it as far as RAM goes and CPU power. If you have trouble playing Minecraft, you're not going to be able to run a server while you play because servers are resource intensive just like playing Minecraft is. Additionally, it is not a server meant to be given out publicly. It's only meant for your friends and close family and people you trust. That is because it is hosted on your own IP address and when someone gets your own IP address they can hit you offline via DDoS attack. They can figure out where you live as well as just kind of be annoying like before I, I've leaked my IP and I've actually just been kind of hit offline but then they'll let it back. It's kind of a weird sort of DDoS attack where they'll hit it really hard for like five minutes and then think oh, okay it's over I can get back online and then it doesn't happen because five minutes later you're hit with another DDoS attack. So it's kind of annoying but because of that it is not meant for anybody and everybody. It's just meant for your friends and family. If you do want a public server one that's up 24 hours a day, one that if you can barely run Minecraft itself, you can still play on the server because it's not hosted on your own computer. And again, one that you can give out to anybody and everybody, no questions asked. You need a 24 hour server from someone like Apex Minecraft Hosting. Go to the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash Apex to get an incredible 24 hour DDoS protected Minecraft server from Apex Minecraft Hosting, running Spigot 1.14, running Minecraft 1.14 vanilla, and overall just being absolutely incredible. We love Apex so much that we actually host our own server on them play.breakdowncraft.com. So if you want an incredible 24-hour DDoS protected in Minecraft server running Spigot 1.14, you can check out Apex at the first link down below. Again, that is the breakdown.xyz slash Apex. Nevertheless, let's just go ahead and jump right on into this. First and foremost, we need to download Spigot. You can grab that at the second link down below. It will take you directly to this page where right up here at the top, you see version 1.14 right up here at the top. Click on this download button here. It will then go ahead and take us off to the download page for Spigot 1.14. As you can see, you're about to download Spigot 1.14.jar. To confirm this download, just click on this orange text right here where it says Spigot 1.14.jar. See that? Click on that and it will open up this. Now, if you're on Google Chrome, it'll be in the bottom left. So as long as you went through the link in the description below and it starts with Spigot and ends in .jar, you can go ahead and click Save File on Mozilla Firefox, but in Google Chrome, it's in the bottom left of your screen and you wanna go ahead and click Keep on that in the bottom left. Now let's go ahead, save the file on Mozilla Firefox, bottom left, click Keep on Google Chrome, and then we can minimize our browser. On our desktop here, I do have spigot 1.14.jar that we just downloaded. If you don't, no worries, go up to the top left for me, but it's in the bottom left of your screen, that little Windows icon there in the bottom left of your screen. Click on that and then type in downloads, right like so. You'll then have a downloads file folder in Windows. Click on that and then in here you will find spigot 1.14. You can drag that to your desktop just for ease of use. Nevertheless, once that's on your desktop, we do need to create a new folder here. Once we've got that new folder, you can name it whatever you want. I'm going to name it play.breakdowncraft.com. Why am I naming it that? Because that is our own Minecraft server, the best Minecraft server in the universe with 1.14 survival, incredible custom skyblock. We have over 150 players online pretty much every single day. Come play with us if you're looking for an incredible skyblock experience or an incredible survival experience. We've got them both and you can't beat them. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and drag and drop this right here, spigot 1.14.jar into our newly created folder. And then we can open up our newly created folder. Once you're in here, you want to right click anywhere in this folder, create a new text document. So see new text document, and then just that's fine. You can leave it titled new text document. Then go ahead and open it up. And then in this new text document here, what we want to do is go ahead and copy from the description this information. Now, what this is, is how many gigabytes of RAM your server is going to have. One, two, three, 
or four. Depending on how many players you're gonna have, how many plugins you're gonna have, you're gonna need more RAM. If your server keeps saying, can't keep up, can't keep up, can't keep up, that's just a sign that you need more RAM. For this one, I'm just gonna go ahead and throw four gigabytes on it, which will be plenty for everything we're gonna be doing with this server. However, if you're gonna be running 20 plugins, or you're gonna have more than like 30, 40, 50 players online, which I wouldn't recommend doing with this kind of a server anyway, but if you were, you would need more RAM than that. But nevertheless, I'm gonna go ahead and paste this in here. Then we can go to File on the new text document, go Save As, and then you can go ahead and save this as run.bat. It is important that the file name is run.bat and then the save type as you wanna do all files. So file name is run.bat and save type is all files. Then go ahead and click save. Now you can close out of the run.bat and I don't know if I mentioned this, but these are in the description, these one, two, and three, four gigabyte server things here, these are in the description. But now, if you go ahead and double click the run.bat file, it won't work. As you see, unable to access jar file server.jar. That is because we need to rename the jar file we downloaded, spigot-1.14, to server, and then that's it. Just make sure it says server. If you don't have the .jar at the end, that's fine. It should just be called server or server.jar if you have like file properties or file tags turned on. So let's go ahead and now double click on run.bat and it will go ahead and as you can see, load on up. But it says failed again. You need to agree to the ULA and that's what we do. So as we can see, we have an EULA.txt in here now. Go ahead and double click on that EULA. Go to this link right here and as long as you agree that your server won't break it, come here and change EULA equals false to EULA equals true, T-R-U-E. Then go ahead and file save on that EULA, right like so. And now, finally, if we double click on run.bat, it will load on up. Now, if you for some reason never got the EULA after saving this to server.jar, make sure that it is server.jar there, everything loaded in. And if it is and it's not working, no worries. You just need to download Java, which we do have a link in the description down below to this. This is our tutorial on how to download and install the Java development kit, which is needed not only to run a Minecraft server, but to even play Optifine or Forge mods or anything in Minecraft. So come here, download this, do all that, and make sure it all works and is all good by going through this entire tutorial. Now, if it still doesn't work when you've installed the Java development kit, you need to run the jar fix, which is linked, you guessed it, in the description down below. And this walks you through how to run the jar fix, how to get everything set up. So if you do have an issue opening the run.bat file and getting everything loaded in, install Java first, and then second, run the jar fix. But nevertheless, we can now come back here and see that our world is set up. It does say done here. And most importantly, we do have a plugins folder. Now, at this point, if you were just looking to test a server offline, you could do that. However, if you want your friends to be able to join the server, we need to go ahead and stop the server. By the way, as you can see, can't keep up. Is the server overloaded? That's a sign that you might need some more RAM. But nevertheless, let's go ahead and type STOP to stop the server, and it will go ahead and close out of everything. And as we can see, press any key to continue. We'll close out of that. Now, how do we make this able to be joined by your friends and people you give the IP to? Well, we need to get a port forward done. And doing that is pretty easy. We've helped millions of people port forward. And I'm going to walk you through every single step of the process. So don't freak out. It's going to be okay. Let's go ahead and get it done. First and foremost, you need to come up to the top left of my screen. It's in the bottom left of your screen. That little Windows icon on the bottom left of your screen click on that and then type in cmd you will then see command prompt here it's a desktop app go ahead and click on that and then in the command prompt you want to type ip con fig ip config exactly like that and hit enter it'll then give you all sorts of different information but what we want here is the ipv4 address and the default gateway so make notes of both of those, the IPv4 address and the default gateway. Now, if you have two default gateways, one that is like, as you can see, it has colons and all sorts of stuff, and one that is just 192.168.1.1, if you have both options, what you're going to want to use is the 192.168, or basically the one that's only numbers, not the one that has letters in it as well. You can only host Minecraft servers on IPv4 addresses, and all these other ones, as you can see, are IPv6 addresses, which is no good. So nevertheless, once we've got our IPv4 address and default gateway, we'll need to use the IPv4 address first. To do that, come over to your Minecraft server here, find the server properties file right here, server.properties, double click on it. And if this is your first time opening it, you will need to select it to open with text edit or notepad. I'm sorry, notepad. You will need to select it to open with notepad. Once you've done that, you need to come right down here to where it says server dash IP and then put your IPv4 address right next to that. My case, 192.168.1. Oh, 168.1.184. Now, 
that is what mine is. Yours may be completely different. And occasionally your IPv4 address will change. So if suddenly your friends can't join the server or something, you will need to come and change your IPv4 address here, as well as the IPv4 address in your port forward later. But nevertheless, let's go ahead and do file save, right like so on the server.properties file. Sorry, I did save as file save on the server.properties file. And then we can close out of it. Now we need to port forward. To do this from your default gateway here, go ahead and take this 192.168.1.1 or whatever your number is, it might be different, but whatever that number is next to the default gateway, go to your browser, open up a brand new tab, and then just type into that browser your IPv or your default gateway there. So your default gateway, in my case, 192.168.1.1, right there, and it opens up a login page. Now your login page will most likely look completely different from my login page, and that is perfectly fine. If it does, no worries. Yours might just be a login box that pops down from the top, but what's important is what you enter into that login box so you can log into your router. Now, if you know your router's login information, awesome. Go ahead, enter it, and log on in. If you don't, no worries. There is a link in the description down below, and this shows you how to find your router's password. We've helped over 75,000 people do it at the time of this video, and you can go down through here and go through all these different methods to get your router password set up and running and basically find it, even if you have to call your ISP. But most people find it by this point. Right. By the time you're getting to resetting your router and trying the default info, you're good to go. But nevertheless, let's go ahead, come back over here and log right on into the router. And once we log in, your router is most likely going to look completely different from my router. But guess what? That is also a okay. So once we've logged in here, you'll see just basically a simple setup. However, yours might look completely different. No worries though. We also have an in-depth guide on how to port forward on some of the most popular routers currently on the market. Here's a video on how to do that. This is just a general port forward guide, but this video right here will show you everything you need to know on like 10 different routers and how to port forward on them, what buttons to click, exactly where to go, all of that stuff. So go watch that video and your router or a router like yours is most likely in there and that'll help you port forward. Nevertheless, I am going to show you how to port forward on this router in addition to give you some common terms that port forward may be because it is a few different ones. So for me, it is in security. For you, it may be in it advanced. It may be an advanced advanced. It may be an admin. It may be an administrator. It might just be straight up called port forwarding slash port triggering. It might be called apps in gaming. It might be called forwarding apps in gaming. It might be called gaming in apps. I've seen it called a bunch of different stuff, but overall what you're looking for is port forwarding or probably apps in gaming. In my case, it is going to be in the security tab. Then after that, it is going to be in the apps and gaming tab. See that? Click on that. And then that takes us over to here where it's in the single port forwarding tab. See that single port forwarding? Go ahead and click on that. And then in here, as you can see, I've already got some port forwards. Let me delete those. But nevertheless, once you're in here, we do have single port forwarding and we can add a new single port forwarding. Click on that and then you can name this whatever you want. This might be called an ID or something like that. This is just so you know what it is. So I'm gonna call it Minecraft for your external port. And as a matter of fact, for anything to do with port, it's gonna be 25565 for your internal port. And again, anything to do with port, port one, port two, external port, internal port, outside port, inside port, whatever it's called, it doesn't matter. If it has the word port there, it's going to be 25565. And in my case, internal port says the word port, so 25565. For protocol, you're gonna either do both or you're gonna do TCP slash UDP. But whatever you do, you wanna make sure both protocols are selected. It should be TCP and UDP both selected. If you can't select them both, just do this port forward twice, one for each protocol. But I do have the option to select both, so that's what we're gonna do. For your device IP, this is going to be your IPv4 address. So in my case, that is going to be 192.168. What was it over here? Dot one dot one eight four. So dot one dot one eight four, right like so. And that all looks good. Now, if you do have an external IP mentioned here or something like that, you will need that to be able to join your server. And I'll show you how to get that as soon as we save this port forward and apply it. And if you do need that, you can come back and enter it. So let's go ahead and click save, click apply. And for most people, the port forward is done unless you do need that external IP. If you do, let's go ahead and grab it. Go ahead and go to the description down below and you will be taken here. This is the what's my IP link down below. And this is our basically guide that shows you how we have your IP address, but also where you can get your IP address. Basically every website you visit gets your IP address. We're just giving it back to you. So once you're here, you can copy this IP address. Now, this is again, why Apex Minecraft hosting is so important. Not only do you not have to port 
support for it with Apex Minecraft hosting, which you can check out at the first link down below, the breakdown.xyz slash Apex. You also don't need to worry about any of this information. On our screen, you can see the region that you live, the state, the city, and even latitude and longitude coordinates based on your IP address. So it's very, very, very important that you do not give this IP address out to anybody and everybody, and you only give it out to people you trust that you know won't hit your internet offline, that won't care where you live, maybe already know where you live most likely, and if that's the case, you'll be good. Otherwise, do not give your public IP address out to them because you could regret it. Nevertheless, go ahead and copy your public IP address here, and then you can come back over to your router, and if you needed that external IP or public IP or whatever, you can paste that in here. Otherwise, we can go ahead at this point, minimize our browser, open up our server folder, go ahead and run our server with the run.bat file, and open up Minecraft 1.14. This will allow us to be able to then join on in game, right? We gotta be in Minecraft to join the server. So if we play latest release 1.14 here, we'll load on up as our spawn is loading on up. As you can see, preparing spawn area, going through all of that there. Whatever you see done, by the way, on the Minecraft server, it is finished. And also, at this point, if you've loaded on up and you're good, and you wanna see how to get plugins on your Minecraft 1.14, server. Check out the eye at the top of your screen. I have an in-depth video showing you how to install World Edit in 1.14 and basically be able to get plugins on your 1.14 server. But nevertheless, here we are in game. If we go ahead and click on multiplayer here, wait, what is that? An Apex Minecraft hosting server, but also play.breakdowncraft.com, which is also technically an Apex Minecraft hosting server. But come play with us at play.breakdowncraft.com, the best Minecraft server in the universe. We've got 1.14 survival, 1.12.2, incredible custom skyblock as it says there. So come play with us, play.breakdowncraft.com. Now I'm just going to go ahead and direct connect and then we're going to enter in our public IP address here. In my case, it's all blacked out except for the last two digits there. That way you know it's the same one we had earlier. If you go look, it's the same one. That one ended in 14. This one ends in 14. But we can now go ahead and click join server and it will log right on in and get things rocking and rolling on the server. We'll also be able to see a pop up over here. We'll see movement basically over here that shows that we are in game. So let's go ahead, wait a few seconds and I will join on in. My internet is a bit slow this morning. There we go. We are now joining on in. As you can see over here, Nix Games has joined in and this is our server. If you have any questions about getting your server live, let me know in the comment section down below. And if your friends are having issues joining your server, simply make sure your port forward is done correctly. Most likely any issues you have are centered around your port forward there. So make sure you do take care of that. It could also be a firewall either on your router or on your computer or an antivirus on your computer blocking the connection. So make sure you look there as well. It's a very interesting snow seed. If you guys want it, we can go ahead and op ourselves, which is if you come over here to your server console, basically the CMD sort of panel over here that has your server information and do op and then whatever your username. So OP space your username and hit enter. It will op you in game. And then now I can run slash seed and there's the seed for all of those who might want it. But nevertheless, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give a thumbs up. Again, check out the uh, link at the eye up there. This was in the description down below for how to get plugins on your newly created spigot and bucket server. My name is Nick. This has been The Breakdown. Come play with us on play.breakdowncraft.com, the best Minecraft server in the multiverse, and I am out. Peace.